Hello everyone, a very good afternoon. I would like to thank you all for joining us today. My name is Aparna Haldar and I'll be hosting this webinar. Before we get started, please let me take a few minutes to introduce Payato. Payato is a resource-powered cybersecurity consulting firm. We have a decade-long track record with a sector focus on cybersecurity. The foundation of Payatu rests upon three pillars, community and conferences, consulting and training products. Community and conferences encompass Nalcon, an international security conference training and exhibition platform. Hardware.io, a hardware security focused conference along with other initiatives. Consulting and training focuses on thorough security assessments, which helps businesses to discover security threats and further provide training to strengthen network infrastructure. Lastly, we have two products in private beta trials, that is Exploity, a firmware analysis framework and CloudFuzz, an advanced fuzzing framework. Here is an overview of the various consulting assessments we are known for across the globe. Payatu has delivered many cyber talks and workshops in top security conferences that also include Black Hat and Def Con. We take pride in the decade-long impact we have created by contributing to the cybersecurity community all around the world. That was all about Payatu. Today, Shubham Dobe, a security consultant at Payatu, will deliver a webinar on power of automation. You can read all about him on this slide. Before I hand it over to Shubham, I request you to follow a few housekeeping tips. Please be on mute. If you have a question, you can write it in the chat box. We'll answer the question during the intervals or at the end of the webinar. We will be releasing the recording of this webinar on our LinkedIn page. So make sure you're following Payatu. If you're not following the page, check the link in the chat box. You'll be directed towards Payatu's LinkedIn page. Without further ado, let's get started. Shubham, over to you. Thank you, Aparna. Thank you, everyone, for joining. So let me share my screen. So today our topic is power of automation. Now, as we all work in cybersecurity, we know how much importance automation does, right? Even if we need to scan anything, we use Bob suit. And when this automation part comes into picture, this automation parts come into picture when we, we, are, we configure the scan and suppose after 30 minutes, the session locks out or the session times out, right? At that time, your Bob scan will keep on running, but your session is invalid. That means all the scan you are doing after 30 minutes is of waste, right? So to tackle this, Bob suit has its own functionality macro. Now let's get started with Bob suit macro. So Bob suit macro, what is a macro? What macro does when the session times out, right? So what no, in normal scenario, what we will do, we will go and manually do the login and make the session valid, right? But this all things will macro do on our behalf. So it would become easier for us to configure the scan and to get the thing ready. So how this Bob macro work? So it sends a series of requests prior to the server. Okay, like before uh, it does it on our behalf. So once the macro request is been carried out, all the parameters, all the tokens and whatever steps is required to make a session valid, it all uh, macro does everything on its own. And then the final macro request uh, we get on the proxy on the Bob request. So now uh, let's take some uh, on, let's take a view on advantage of Bob macro. Now, as I told you, what problem we were facing during testing was the application was keep terminating, right? So you need to restore the session again and again. The second problem was uh, developer puts a unique token. So what uh, this token is used to prevent the replay attack. Now, what does replay attack means? Replay attack means so developer is trying to prevent you for making a same uh, request again and again. But if you will not make a same request again and again, then how you can test the whole uh, para whole website or the whole parameter, right? We need to test various test cases like XSS, SQL, LFI, RFI, all these things on each and every parameter. So we need to make n number of requests. So to prevent that developer uh, put a forgery token. So we need to bypass that also. 
so how we are uh, now how we are overcoming this problem so if you will see here uh, i will demonstrate uh, i will directly demonstrate it to you uh, without uh, going into the theoretical part okay so i am using the lab known as multi delay yeah, this is a free oops lab you all can go and you all can uh, uh, see this lab so the security level is five okay so now what i'm doing i am going on the csrf page okay and now i am trying to get the request in my bob suit my bob suit is already configured with my browser now if here you will see first we need to understand the flow of the request and uh, response and then we need to carry out uh, our automation task so the problem here is suppose i i am adding something i am adding payatu and I'm saving my blog, right? You see this Payatu. So when I will see Bob suit in this, I got two requests. First one is a get request. And then second is a post request, which I made in this post request. If you will see, uh, uh, once the, in this post request, you should see a CSRF token. Wait, let me send this to repeater and let me send this request. So the CSRF token is blank here. Let me again restart my book. I'm using community version. It is free. You can use it. Okay, I'm opening multi delay and again the same thing. Make the security level higher and then go to the page, add anything. Check the request. So a get request was made and then a post request has been made. And if you see here, you can see the CSRF token, right? Now, first we need to find out from where this token came. So what I will do, I will analyze my get request. So here in my get request, if I will search for CSRF token, I can see a token OWT. Okay. And this same token that the developer is using in the post request. So I need my, now my task is I need to extract that token from here and I need to replace my token in my post request and if this thing i can do a number of times that means automatically then each and every request will get a new csrf token now how to do this using bob macro so first of all where you will find bob macro so in project options go to session and in session click on add button here add a rule or you can name it whatever you want go to scope uh, select all urls or you can select the scope url as well and then you need to add a rule, uh, add a rule action. Okay. So before adding a rule, you also need to know for what purpose we are adding the rule. So first we need to check what error we are getting. So if I will send the request again, you can see the error, which I will get is failure is always an option. Okay. Now here rendering is hard. So what we will do, we will try to find the keywords. Failure. Okay. So this error I get if I uh, make a replay attack, if I try to make a same request using the same token because the token expired. Okay. So now I know the error also. So now I will, if I will go in my bug suit and I will add a rule, I need to add a rule to check if my session is valid or not. Why we are adding the rule. Now what bug macro will do, it will check in the response if we are getting the error message or not and what the error message is failure is always the option once it will get the it will get the request it will rerun the commands which we have uh, given it and it will make our session valid okay so now 
here I need to configure that if you will find this type of error message in the response body, then run a macro. And what the macro should do? The macro should do this a get request and a post request. Okay. Now click on OK. Now here from the get request, I need to configure the things. Now what I need to configure? I need to fetch the CSRF token, right? I will not change the cookie because the cookies are automatically adding to the browser itself. So I will add a parameter name as CSRF token. Now remember one thing I am this parameter name should be exact whatever the name you are getting in the request because what Bob should will simply do it will simply replace the token right and if you will give the parameter name anything then Bob should will never find where he wants to replace the token. That is why this name is very important. Now we need to fetch the uh, the token. Okay. So search here CSRF token. So here you see a tiny box. I if I can make it bigger. So okay. Okay, you can see this. Now never do this thing. We have habit of uh, configuring our uh, Bob macro or anything by just double clicking it and clicking it. Okay. You notice one thing, if you will double click it and if you will directly try to fetch the token from here, you see this value, it will fetch anything. Uh, it will, uh, the expression is starting from value, right? And in HTML page, there can be N number of values. So your Bob suit will get confused. That is why I always copy this whole paragraph paste it in notepad to get a better visibility. Now we need to copy this whole thing because so my Bob suit should understand that only copy this token where the CSRF uh, token name is given. Okay. So now just change the expression to this and make the closing, make the closing tag. Now you see, automatically Bob has uh, highlighted this request that it will change. It will take the value. Okay. Now it will automatically take the value and it will get the value in the post request because uh, on what basis on, on the basis of the name CSRF token. Okay. Okay. Now click on. Okay. And okay. We are ready to go. Now uh, let me show you the logs what all things will happen in background because we will not see it right right now i'm getting this error message let me again click on the request and if now you will see the error message is gone see zero message uh, zero matches that means we have successfully uh, we have, we have successfully configured our request. Now let's see why this happened and what happened in the background. Now click on this logger button. Now, if you will see what all things happen, I made a false request. I made the request in which I, I, I should get an error. Failure is okay. So see the first request, which I made from my repeater, right? So when this request got, you see here, I am getting the error message. Now Bob should catch this error message because I had preset it in that way. Then Bob should issue a get request. Okay. From this get request, if you will see CSRF token. So the new, uh, see here, the old token zero WT. Okay. Now from this get request, I got a new token. Okay. B Y A P R. And now in the next request, it has automatically inputted the same CSRF token. And thus now uh, again, uh, I made one more request. So it again uh, converted it again, changed my token on its own. So this is how we automate things. This is how I bypass the developer's logic of getting a CSRF token into a request. Now, every time I will make a, uh, this thing, you, you see my token will change. Now it is FJ. It will change again. Now it will, it is BM. So this is how we configure Bob suit to do the, uh, we configure macro to do all the automated testing on our behalf and our session will never terminate. So now the same thing I have written, uh, in here also, 
that it fetch the application to check the session is valid or not and all those things right but the and i demonstrated you the scenario as well but now bobsuit macro has some limitation now what limitation it has first first of all it can only fetch the token from an html page only you saw my response if the response is html then and then only burp macro will work or else it uh, if the request is in json which we find more oftenly in the api call and every everywhere so it will not work if the request are in xml then we can't extract the error message and if we can't extract the message then we we will not able to replace it right similarly uh, burp macro take too much time like uh, for each and every request if it will generate you the token it will follow all my steps again and again again and again and it will take time as well as uh, the number of request uh, will increase and it will uh, unnecessarily load your server right secondly uh, then if you will go to a multi level authentication right then bobsuit macro is very hard to uh, configure because you need to remember each and every flow right and it is slow uh, the reason behind slow is again because it repeat whatever uh, the we configured the scan suppose we have configured five multi step process right so now bobsuit will, uh, macro will repeat all the five steps again and again so it is heavy as well it, it slows the time uh, it's it is slow because the of the duplicate request okay now to overcome this we will use a tool known as ator now let me share you the github it is also a free and open source tool i am sharing the link in the chat of ator you can download it from there okay so now why we are using ator the only reason we are using ator is to overcome the limitations of burp macro so the features of ator is whatever the limitation of burp suit was so it is fast because it save the request in a memory in burp memory that is why it will not give you duplicate uh, request again and again secondly uh, you saw the burp macro everything i need to do from my own but now in ator you will get a gui which will do everything for you it will also fetch the request and response from json and xml and in every every uh, response format it works it it is not only constrained to html request and its scan speed is fast because again it uses the memory okay now let's take a scenario now this scenario is a real life scenario again you have you you might have faced this in in your testing experience so for this i am using a lab which is known as tiredful api this is again developed by payatu and i am sharing the link in the chat so you you can download the lab from your own okay so okay so let's start so here if you will see uh to complete the challenge uh, in normally in api request how api request work it works on that basis we will get a token uh, authorization bearer token and the issue is the bearer token expires in 30 minute or in 3 uh, minutes or sometime the token expires right now again we will use ator and we will refresh the token on its own so now if you follow the uh, so this given instruction i need to log in to get my token so let me log in okay invalid i guess okay i got a token right now let's check the token in bob suit okay so this is the request who is who is giving me the token let me highlight it so i can remember it okay now what else i need to do here the challenge is uh, they are giving me a get request okay and i need to make this get request and i need to add the token whatever i i got okay so let me copy this thing and let me make a get request to that url so let me change it to and the exam id is mqw and i uh, also i need to add authorization bearer token 
authorization bearer and the value is whatever we got from the response from here okay let me send the request it redirected me okay i got the response so again the first thing what we need to give is we need to check is the what type of error it make it will create if the session got invalid then what type of error we will get so we will feed that same error in the bob suit to check whether our session is invalid or not to getting the, to get the error what i am doing i am changing my uh, i with any other alphabet okay i am changing the token value so if you will change the token value this type of error you will get you will get a un unauthorized error or you will get a authentication uh, not provided error okay now uh, also one more feature of ator is you can add multiple error conditions now it is very useful suppose you are testing a app which has both website also and api also so for api you will give the error condition as 401 and for website, you can give the error condition as failure is always the option, right? So it will work in both the condition. But if you would have gone with the Bob macro, you can't give multiple error conditions. So now we understood that this is an error condition. And from here, I need to generate the token. So it is very simple uh, in Ator. Just uh, download the Ator from the extent from the given link, which I shared with the in the chat and then add this extension in your Bob suit. Once you add the extension in your verb suit, right click and in extensions, you will see at all. Now in at all, as you can see, this is my error condition. So as I told you, the feature of at all is it is GUI based. So you just give it in the error condition. And from here, you are obtaining the token. So share it in the token. Okay, now come in at all. Now in ATOR, you can see this is the error condition, right? Spot the error condition. Now, right now, what error, I, what condition I'm giving that uh, it is an API. So if you will get a status code 401, trigger my uh, uh, ATOR. So you, you see here, my condition is added. Okay. Now let's try to obtain the token. So click on here, click here and this thing I want, right? So just double click here and click from selection it will automatically select everything as it has gui and name the token anything you want you don't need to name it as it is at as we needed to do in macro so you can give name anything and add this token and now we need to replace now what we need to replace if in error condition suppose uh, uh, after error condition what we need to replace so replace this token Okay, so from selection, let me select it. So I need to replace the token with the new token, which I already configured from the response. And rename is uh, rename it anything replaced and just add it. Now you see, right now I'm getting error because of this, right? Let me send the request. See, in the logger, if you will see what happened. So I did a post request. Okay, I did a uh, so here you, if you can see, I did a get request with that, with that false token, right? ZZ. And uh, I got a, uh, okay, here. I made a false request, a, a request, I got the error, then my, this uh, obtain token got triggered and I got a new token. And here, if you will see my new token got replaced. That is why I got a 200 okay instead of error. Now you can check it anyhow. You, you can replace all this value and you can send it. See, again, you are getting the, the same thing. And now the important part is here, it will only send one request. You noticed only one request is sent. In Bob macro, the whole, all these three re requests would have been sent in Bob, Bob macro. But at all, it saved the, all your configuration in its memory. That is why you are sending only one request so it is uh, better, it is fast, and it doesn't load the server as well. So this was uh, the topic of uh, how to automate your testing and how this, uh, uh, how you can automate the whole scanning process and what is power of automation.
so yeah so we are done with the this thing so anyone have any question or anything they can ask in chat yeah so difference between ator and macro is uh, uh, see that there is no difference uh, macro was having certain limitations right and we needed a tool to bypass all those limitations that is why ator was invented to bypass all the limitation what macro have so yes it will work it will work for each and every api because api is using the token right and uh, ator is simply replacing the token and it has nothing to do with the uh, programming the node js or graphql it has nothing to do with the programming languages it will only uh, replace uh, the token so it will work on graphql any other question can we automate json with macro using regex uh, no again it will not support only uh, using regex also this uh, macro only supports html data format so you will not able a uh, macro will not able to fetch the response for you so you can't select the this thing your value of json body or xml body it will not work on any of them so i have to use both no only ator will do your work you can configure ator for every situations any more questions guys yeah it okay so will it work on aws token or not now first you it will work on any uh, request where you are the like you are the tester right they they will give you something to generate the token like uh, if you would have seen the here in my example wait let me exit from full screen I'm not getting the option to exit from this full screen. Aparna, can you help uh, me to exit from this full screen mode? Okay. So if you will see this example or the first one also, the main thing was here I am able, like I am giving my credentials and I am getting the token, right? So uh, in AWS, mostly what I have seen, they give you a token and they generate the token by themselves they do not give you the authority to generate the token if you will not have the authority to generate the token then how you will replace the token using at all so in whatever programming language or whatever server if you are having this privilege to get an access token because we test for straight five to seven days right for a big application so usually they give us the token because if the token will expire every 30 minutes, what we will do? We will not mail the client after every 30 minutes, right? So they give this, uh, this thing for us. They create a separate credential for us and they give us this authority to generate the token. So in whatever uh, scenario, if you have this ability, the authority, then you can use at all. Okay, any more questions? Let's wait for another five minutes. Uh, if anybody has any questions, they can drop uh, their questions in the chat or else we'll end the session. Thank you.
thank you thank you all uh, yeah it will be published on the linkedin page Yeah, it will work with GitHub as well. Shivam, there is another question for you yeah, from Chetan. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you ca cannot use at all for host data injection. Uh, we only use at all to make our session valid, uh, to make our uh, session uh, like valid session. And we cannot perform any attack using at all. You can check host header injection and everything using repeater on, on, on host, using host header payloads. Only for career. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. So again, you cannot perform this attack like like this. Uh, this at all. This the main purpose of the tool is only to make your session valid. So your session should not go invalid, right? And or uh, rest all the attacks, whatever you are performing, you will perform on your own using the same thing you uh, the way you are performing. So it is only useful for automated uh, attacks. Like Bob should do everything for you, right? But if the session only get invalid, then how Bob should will perform the attacks? So uh, so to prevent the session, we use this at all. Okay. As for uh, Keshav Agrawal's question, uh, we'll recommend you to follow our uh, social channels. You'll be updated regarding Payatu's upcoming webinars, events, and sessions. Yes, it, it is majorly used. The only purpose it is to prevent the session expiration. There is no other purpose of at or or Bob macro. So are there any more doubts from the participants? I guess there are no more questions. Um, uh, it's best if we end the session. So thank you all for uh, participating in this wonderful session by Shubham. I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye.